I really think that the reason why his scandal, and, and, you know, people shout about it, they do things, but nobody really cares is because of how he looks. Sure. Oh. There's a certain, it's the big black glasses, the Mr. Peabody glasses and the sort of doughy countenance and that hair is a little bit not full. It's not gone. It's just everything about him is screams of just mediocrity. He's not obese. He's not skinny. He's just, he's everything in the middle. And I have to say, when I, when I watch him now on the floor trying to interact with his new Republican brethren, it looks like one of those movies, like prison movies, where they yell like fish. Yeah. Like it's like, fresh meat! Hey, fresh meat! <laughs> like he's got that look on his face like, I, I'm going to have to join the Aryan gang because the Spanish gang is threatening me. So yeah. can I hang out with you fellas? Like he doesn't ever look like he belongs. No, he's always on the outside. He looks like he just had to give up a carton of smokes to get to keep his muffin. Yeah. That's that's what it that's what he looks like to me. Maybe he'll undergo like a makeover and come back with kind of like a leathery looking face and a crazy haircut. That guy's got baby's bottom written all over him. He does. <laughs> he just seems like he would be a treat to wrestle. That took an unexpected turn. <laughs> You, you know what I mean? You're just trying to feel strong. No, no, I don't know what you mean. He'd be a treat to wrestle. All right. Stand by it. <laughs> I think I think a little slippery and squishy, but okay. He really, to me, it looks like his mom drops him off at Congress and like kisses him on the cheek. And he's like, mom, don't. Like, <laughs> Matt Gates off. is going to see me. Drop me off a few blocks in front of it. <laughs> yeah. All right. By the way, that's not my mom. That's Princess Diana. Right. Everything about him screams mediocrity. Yeah, I'll say. That was a hilarious, albeit pretty astute observation about George Santos from Jon Stewart. And looking at it through that lens, it actually makes sense. Maybe that kind of explains why he's such a pathological liar. Perhaps he's deeply insecure. Although I'm not here to psychoanalyze him, but John Stewart goes on to make a really poignant point about individuals like George Santos. And I think that what he says is actually really important. He kind of issues a warning about Santos and individuals like him, that even though there's so much ridiculousness surrounding these types of folks, that doesn't mean that we should underestimate them because they still indeed pose a danger. Mediaite reports, Stewart still issued a warning about Santos tying the Republican to Donald Trump and cautioning people against making the same mistake he made and how seriously he took the former president. Absurdity, Stewart argued, is where the real danger can be. Quote, the thing we have to be careful of, and I always caution myself on this, and I ran into this trouble with Trump, is we cannot mistake absurdity for lack of danger because it takes people with no shame to do shameful things, he said. Now, I'm guilty of making this mistake as well. I, too, downplayed the threat of Donald Trump because it's hard not to when somebody is just so cartoonishly ridiculous and clownish. So it's hard to not look at them and laugh. But I think that in the post-Trump era, we should learn that underestimating these types of people who are overly ridiculous and clownish, we do that at our own peril. So I don't believe that we should underestimate George Santos. That's not to say that we should overestimate the threat that he poses, but I think that we need to adequately estimate the threat that he poses. And he absolutely poses a threat to Americans in this position of power because almost every single thing about him has been a lie. He completely made up his resume. He didn't embellish as he claims. He made up his resume. He made up his educational background, his career, elements of his life, playing sports. Um, and it goes so much deeper and more nefarious than that. And that's really what we're still learning about George Santos. So the first thing that I want to touch on is his name and whether or not George Santos even is his real name. And there's evidence that he went by other names, and this was even kind of confirmed by older footage of himself going by different names. First and foremost, though, journalist Marissa Cabas reports, I just spoke by phone with Eula Rochard, a Brazilian drag queen who was friends with George Santos when he lived near Rio. She said everyone knew him as Anthony, never George, or by his drag name, Katara, and confirms this photo is from a 2008 drag show at Ikarai Beach. So that photograph right there kind of throws doubt 
on the question about his sexuality because i mean i, I guess you could tec technically be a straight drag queen but i think that that's pretty rare although he was married to a woman up until 2019 so i'm assuming that there was this period in his life where he went through denial and maybe was an ex-gay. I don't know, but I would love for a journalist to look into that. Either way, when it comes to him going by a different name, this was a claim corroborated by his ex-roommate. Let's listen. Um, you know, his mother was um, a housekeeper in, in Manhattan, and it just didn't seem feasible for him supposedly to, to come from all this uh, generational wealth, if you will, and... What, it, why is why are you doing the things that you're doing? It, it's, it doesn't make sense to me. Well, well um, he was he had made allegations that he came from generational wealth, and you're saying that his mother was a housekeeper in the city in, in Manhattan. Yeah. Um, so people are going to wonder, and also you know he he you knew him at through another name, right? The last name Devolder. Yes, I've 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 always known him as Anthony Devolder. I've yeah. never known him as George Santos. Um, I was actually quite surprised. I guess he, you know, went by his middle name and his mother's name. Um, but yeah, no, I've, I've always known him as, as Anthony DeVolder. Now, I had to include the other claims made by his ex-roommate because you can almost see that based on the way he's describing Santos, lying was just a personality trait. It was deeply embedded in his identity. He had to lie about everything, or I should say lack thereof with regard to his identity because he didn't have an identity. So he just made up these identities and everything about him is synthetic. He's so fake. And in a newly resurfaced video from a 2019 Grifty walk away event where ex-leftists announced that they're leaving the Democratic Party in very Grifty fashion, he was there and he asked the question to Blair White. And we'll talk about the question that he asks because it's just so ridiculous. But he refers to himself not as George Santos. Oh, you gotta be here. So my name is Anthony DeVolder. Um, I'm a New York City resident. I recently founded a group called United for Trump, so if you guys want to follow, that would be awesome. My question's directed for both Blair and um, Brandon. Well, Brandon's an idol to all of us. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, but Blair, I, yes. I have a question. How do you think that as a trans woman and a conservative, you can help educate other trans people from not having to follow the narrative that the media and the Democrats put forward, and how can Brandon incorporate that into walk away in more, more in debt? That's my question. Hi, Blair, thanks for taking my question. Um, I wanna know how you can dupe more trans people into supporting a party that wants them dead. These people are so ridiculous. Blair White is a clown. The other individuals at that event, they're clowns. And these are grifters. This is all about making money for them. But I've just got to point out, I can't imagine what that room smelled like because, goddamn, I would want to be nowhere near that event. Either way, like the name and whether or not he goes by George Santos, that seems relatively benign compared to other things that he's lied about and scams that he's run, to be clear. But we're finding out more lies still till this day. For example, as Mediaite reports, George Santos claims he attended Met Gala and commissioned art for museums in resurfaced interview. And one of the most sick and twisted accusations is the following. Vice News reports, George Santos accused of stealing thousands from Dying Dogs GoFundMe, a veteran says Santos stole $3,000 from a fundraiser for his sick service dog. And we're going to dive into the article, but I just want to pause right there. This is where it really gets nefarious because it shows you how this isn't just about him being a, a pathological liar. I don't, again, want to psychoanalyze him too much here, but I, I think that this tells me that this man has got to be a sociopath. The things that he's lied about here, the things that he's done to hurt people, I feel like any normal person would show at least a minimal amount of remorse, but we've seen none of that from George Santos. He is defiant, refuses to resign after Republicans in his own county are saying, we need you to resign. So he, he's not sorry. And 
the lies are one thing, but the scams that he's ran, the way that he's deceived people is downright sickening. Vice continues here. The veteran, 47-year-old Richard Ostoff, accused the freshman New York congressman Tuesday of setting up a GoFundMe to pay for medical treatment for his service dog, raising 3000 through it, and then disappearing with the money without handing over a cent. The dog then died months later without receiving treatment. Ostoff told Patch.com that after his dog Sapphire developed a stomach tumor in 2016, a veterinarian referred him to a guy who runs a pet charity. That man was Santos, who was then going by the name Anthony DeValder, and the charity was Friends of Pets United, according to Patch.com. Santos has claimed that the charity was a registered nonprofit, but the Internal Revenue Service has no record of the organization's existence, the New York Times reported in December. After the GoFundMe's goal was reached, Santos stopped answering my texts and calls, Ostoff told Patch.com. Ostoff posted on Facebook in November of 2016 that he was scammed by Anthony DeValder and that due to bad veterinary contacts and subterfuge regarding payment, Sapphire has not received veterinary care and her growth is three to four times bigger than it was when the campaign was fulfilled according to a screenshot published by Patch.com. And as the article mentioned, the dog ended up dying. Sapphire died in January of 2017 after people gave money to this cause to save this dog's life. Anthony DeValder or George Santos took the money and ran. And that's why I think that what name he used is important and it does come into play. Because when you look at this history of lies and scams, maybe he was forced to take on a new name and assume the name of George Santos because he scammed too many people as Anthony DeVolder. And I refer to scams in the plural because going back to his ex-roommate and also the name controversy and what he actually is named, well, he did apparently do more scams on GoFundMe. And he went by a third name as well. Let's listen. And I also knew him as uh, Anthony Zabrowski. So you knew him. He, he, why did he say he had two names then? Well, he he used Zabrowski for his uh, Friends of Pets United, his um, uh, his GoFundMe. And he would say, oh, well, you know, the, the Jews will give more if you're a Jew. And so that's the name he used for his GoFundMe's. And what was he having GoFundMe's for back then? Uh, his, he had a uh, pet charity, Friends of Pets United. Uh, it was supposedly to um, help out with, you know, sick animals and things like that. There's actually um, just an article released from um, uh, one of my reporters uh, who's been interviewing me a lot, uh, Jacqueline Sweet, about how he conned a, a homeless military vet out of three thousand dollars for his uh, service dog, did, and yeah, he was. Did you? He was did he actually back. have a pet charity? Did I mean? Did he like? Did it, he have a pet? Not, he he did like dogs, yes, um, but he never had any um, any activity as far as taking animals to the vet or um, buying food or anything. When I went to visit him, when this ch so-called charity was active. When and they were getting donations. So his roommate is implying that that wasn't the only scam that George Santos ran. And he went by a different name that was seemingly Jewish sounding in order to manipulate Jewish people into donating to his causes because he believed the stereotype that Jewish people would be more likely to donate to somebody with a Jewish sounding name. I mean, the man is truly off his rocker. I don't even know what to say about this. This is genuinely twisted. So that's why John Stewart's warning about George Santos really resonated with me. It's because somebody who's willing to do all of this should be nowhere near a position of power. These people are indeed dangerous, despite how cartoonishly clownish and evil they may be. Because somebody who could take from people, create these scams, try to raise money based off of this gut-wrenching story, and then just cut and run, that person should be nowhere near power because he is voting on legislation that will affect millions of people's lives. And when you see how cold-hearted he's been prior to his stint as a member of Congress, well, as a member of Congress, imagine the cruel legislation he's going to support. It's just sick and twisted and 
He's got to resign, but he's not going to resign. So however he can be removed from Congress, I think that Democrats should pursue that route because Republicans aren't going to do anything about this. Kevin McCarthy has given him a committee assignment. So this is just going to be a member of Congress, but he should not be there because this is not just somebody who is a pathological liar. This is a dangerous, potential sociopathic individual who should not be accepted by Congress or society in general. He should be outcasted because this is a freak and a gross person.